A real and complete three-dimensional game has just been created by an artificial intelligence which has been built on a new kind of technology by graphics card giant NVIDIA. This type of artificial intelligence application gives us a glimpse into a future where all games are at the very least enhanced by AI in terms of making the game photorealistic or simulating physics faster than any supercomputer could do today. Welcome to this episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you the game which the AI has made, how it was done and how we can expect AI to integrate into future next generation video games outside of smarter non-playable characters. Artificial intelligence has become quite significant and plays a huge role in a variety of games, mostly in terms of dictating reactions of non-playable characters to game events. However, AI is capable of far more than having a character dive behind a corner during a firefight, and a couple of AI researchers used NVIDIA's Game Gone Neural Network to develop Gone Theft Auto, a totally AI-generated version of Grand Theft Auto V. The end result is impressive and gives us a good look into what the rumored AI chips in the next-gen consoles might be able to accomplish. In GTA V, the playable demo involves driving along a short stretch of highway. It's not what you'd anticipate from a current graphics standpoint. The image is very pixelated, and even after up-sampling the output, there's still a haze, as if you're playing GTA V in a dream state. Despite this, the demo contains some impressive details, such as the creation of a shadow beneath the car and accurate sunlight reflections in the rear window that change as the vehicle moves. So, how did this game come into existence? NVIDIA's Game Gab is a unique generative adversarial network, thus the moniker Gone Theft Auto. GANs are formed up of two neural networks that are, in a sense, enemies, as the name indicates. One of those enemies is called the generator. A generator is being trained with specific data, such as human photographs or in this example, footage of a video game being played, and then uses what it has learned to produce false material that seems authentic. The discriminator is the second component. This section is responsible for keeping the generator honest by determining what is real and valid and what is not. GANs can make pictures that resemble photos of human faces, despite the fact that the faces don't belong to anybody. It achieves this level of realism by combining a generator that learns to create the desired output with a discriminator that learns to differentiate actual data from the generator's output. The discriminator attempts not to be deceived by the generator while the generator tries not to be tricked by the discriminator. NVIDIA introduced GameGon, the first neural network model that replicates a computer engine using a GAN, around this time last year, and shown it replicating a fully working version of Pac-Man. It's now being utilized to recreate Grand Theft Auto V, which shows just how quickly this field is advancing. Working itself up from a simple two-dimensional game without any real-life physics and simple game rules to a three-dimensional game which more or less obeys our laws of physics, has rather realistic, although low-resolution graphics and has a more varied terrain. The neural network is the actual world of Grand Theft Auto, and you may play in it. For this experiment, YouTuber Harrison Kinsley rented an NVIDIA DGX Station A100 which was equipped with four A100 Ampere GPUs and a 64-core AMD EPIC processor. They fed the GAN a dozen simultaneous feeds of the highway scene, and it learned how the automobile moves and responds to controls based on the data. It was first stumped by how to deal with limits, but it finally worked out what to do if the automobile, for example, collided with a barrier on the side of the road. It's essential to note that none of this is human-coded, since the whole demo is created by the game GAN, from how the world transforms as the car drives to the controls that manage the vehicle. Not everything is as perfect as it seems. Aside from the low-resolution visuals, the GAN had trouble dealing with accidents with other cars. Kinsley recalls a scenario in which the GAN just broke a police car in half when the main vehicle collided head-on with it. It did, however, improve with time. The gameplay has a dream-like feel to it, due in part to the fact that the neural network doesn't completely duplicate every feature of GTA 5 and is in some other ways slightly inconsistent in terms of temporal memory, which is largely obvious at times when another car is disappearing completely when it is too far away. This is likely to be fixed though once it has more access to training data and is more capable of understanding how a real world works. This might be a look into the future of gaming. It's not difficult to picture a GAN creating a full game, or even parts of one. However, that is quite a ways away. 
In the meantime, you may play and edit Grand Theft Auto on GitHub. As we all know, graphics and physics in games have improved a lot since the days of Pong or Super Mario Bros., and that we're getting really close to games matching real life. But just as with many other software problems, the first 90% are easy, but getting through the last 10% is seemingly impossible. This is where artificial intelligence comes in and saves the day. It has been shown that AI can not only create completely new games, but can also more or less draw over existing games to make them match real life in graphics or move physics objects in a realistic way. Perhaps a program can make an exact clone of GTA, with an option for advanced levels. That would still be good for Gone, as you could clone a game that didn't have any visual flaws. Gone can then run GTA in any other game, and make it play like it was designed and developed. This can be extended further, such that programs could be made to recreate parts of real life, such as video games. That would probably be a bit overkill, since it would require a lot of resources. One early example on how this would look like has been shown by an Intel employee just last month. Funnily enough, it also used GTA as an example. It's a bit of a jumble. It appears gray, green, and a little dull from the perspective of a player. It's similar to an early 2000s FPS, with the saturation drained right out of it. However, from a scientific standpoint, it's clearly a big success, and I believe that's what we should be focusing on here. Machine learning is a technique for grafting photorealism onto a picture that hasn't been produced in that way. To accomplish so, you'd require completely ray-traced sceneries and extremely time-consuming workloads that only big animation studios can handle frame by frame. By combining various training datasets, the researchers may further mix up the findings. The view improved with the Mapillary Vistas dataset is considerably brighter and more colorful than the scene enhanced with the Cityscapes dataset seen in the movie. Clearly, more work needs to be done to get this technology off the ground and into the hands of gamers, or any other kind of media for that matter. If done correctly, the Intel Labs researchers think that their improvement may be readily translated into game engines for deeper, more realistic outcomes, opening up a whole new realm of in-game customization. However, before we reach anything near to playable frame times, the process will need to be sped up through optimization. On an RTX 3090, inference with the enhancing photorealism enhancement takes half a second today. As with artificial intelligence adding more realistic physics to a game, this hasn't directly been done inside a game just yet, but it has indeed been proven to be possible for AI to do physics simulations just by having watched videos of objects or particles interacting with each other. I doubt it would take much longer for that to be implemented into game engines. And don't even get me started on more intelligent non-playable characters being added to games with which you could have realistic conversations with or that can easily interact with game objects. That is likely going to be a whole other videos as there have emerged some interesting new showcases on how that might look like. The frames that you see is not rendered by a graphics engine. It's actually rendered by the AI technology that we built. This is the first time we combine machine learning and computer graphics to do image generation using deep network. For training data, we are given some driving sequences of different cities. And then we use another segmentation network to extract the high-level semantics from these uh, sequences. We have the UE4 engine to generate this colorized high-level uh, layout. Different objects were given different colors. The network converts uh, this representation to image. I made uh, my co-author to dance Gangnam style, <laughs> which uh, I don't think he would do by himself. We find some good dancing videos uh, from another person and then use my model to synthesize the dance move. That was uh, created by machines, it's not me. So what is your opinion on games using more and more artificial intelligence systems to program and design their games? What about the thousands of programmers and artists currently employed by studios which might lose their value as they can easily be replaced by AI in the future? Please tell us in the comments below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.